Modifications to a Stuart Beam Engine Part 2. Drilling the detent for the Allen head grub screw to hold the vertical rocking arm securely in place. Reassembling the valve gear and setting the valve timing. Fitting the exhaust pipe using a very small socket set. A test run using compressed air shows further problems. After the last episode, one viewer made a comment about filing flats on the shafts. From experience, and in my opinion, the best way to do it is as I'm showing here. Just drill the detent, and the grub screw point fits in there, and it's going nowhere. It is, however, important to make sure that the ground end of the grub screw is at the same angle as the detent drilled in the shaft. This tap is horrible and it is pointless, and it's going to be removed and replaced with a T-piece so I can fit a displacement lubricator to this engine. One week after my surgery to remove a defective kidney, and I'm feeling a lot better. The pain's still there, but it's getting less and less every day. Also, I notice that my voice is getting clearer, far less husky than it was a couple of days ago. With the engine's valve gear reassembled, it's time for an air test. I've fitted the air line, and I've admitted some compressed air, and I'm checking the valve alignment, and it's not looking too good. While I'm thinking about this, it's a good time to oil the engine, applying some lubricating oil to every part that moves. Quite a few viewers send me tips, and I really don't mind, they're usually quite constructive, and one of them was, do you know that you can use steam oil to lubricate the moving parts? And the answer to that is, yes, I do know this. And by using the very thick steam oil, it does take up some of the play in an engine that's badly built, so it doesn't make as much noise. Using thick oil does cause a lot of drag, though. In this clip, I'm checking the valve timing, and it's not right at all. All of the events are taking place after top dead centre, the slide valve should open on the ports just before top dead center, which is the way of things with a steam engine. It cushions all the reciprocating parts and makes it run very smoothly. In this clip, I'm adjusting the position of the slide valve, but I really should be doing this with the valve chest cover removed so I can see the position of the valve relative to the ports. For the moment, I'll just try an educated guess. I don't think it's going to be right, but I'll find out in a moment. Now it's back together. Well, it rotates after a fashion, but I can clearly see there's a problem. The cylinder is loose on the mounting and is wobbling about. This cannot be a good thing. Also, the valve chest gland is tightened down hard, and it shouldn't be. The valve events are actually diabolical, Everything's taking place far too late. Steam, or in this case compressed air, is being admitted when the piston is on its way back down or up the cylinder. And it's making a really horrible noise, which is quite offensive for a steam engine. As I rotate the flywheel manually, you can see and hear when the compressed air is allowed into the cylinder. And it really is well past top dead centre. When I increase the air pressure though, the engine miraculously runs. And just look at the cylinder moving from side to side. This is not securely held down. I will look into this in detail in the next episode. For now though, I'm showing you this socket set that I bought a while back. It is magnificent. It has just about everything that I would want in a socket set even including a magnetizer, plus some spare bolts for my glasses, which I'm always losing. It really is useful for jobs like this. I'm fitting the exhaust pipe, and I can get right into the corners where the bolts are almost touching the exhaust flange. Before I finish this job, I will shorten the piping and make it look a lot better than it is at the moment. But this will do for now, at least it's no longer in a box on the bench where it could get lost. And once again I'm going to sing the praises of this socket set, with the screwdriver which is extendable or retractable. What a great piece of kit. And now it's top tip time. I often fill the ends of the small sockets that I use, 
with a piece of tissue paper like this. This has the effect of pushing the end of the bolt nearer the end of the socket. I think I'll take this opportunity to show you what I mentioned earlier. Look, spare screws for your glasses. Very, very useful. And even the case is very neat and well made, and because it's small, it just goes in a drawer. I recommend buying one. You can clearly see that the cylinder's wobbling about. Other things are quite good though, so it's not all bad news. The main block that the engine is sat on is a little bit too short, so I've packed it up on a piece of cardboard. Alternatively, I could remove the pedestal and machine some off the bottom of that, but I have a more interesting idea that I will show in the next episode. Here's another shot of me rotating the flywheel so you can see where the valve events occur, and they are far too late at both ends. No amount of messing about with the eccentric position is going to put this right. I'm going to remove the cylinder and see how it's fastened down. I suspect it's using quite a lot of silicone rubber to allow this much movement. Silicone rubber is not something I ever use for mounting cylinders. And that is all I can say for now. I'm going to leave the video running to the end with the engine working under compressed air. By the time I've finished working on this engine, it will be much better than it currently is. All that's left to say is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.